What a day. I'm feeling just in the mood for a scrap with a swarm of Americans. The weather is ideal, the sky is clear and cloudless blue. The pilots relax outside, enjoying the warmth of the first spring sunshine. The big loudspeaker blares out dance music. Suddenly, the music stops. Stand by all lights! Stand by all lights! Fresh enemy concentrations are reported in map sector Dora Dora. Ten fifty five hours. Take, Take off all flies! Take, Take off all flies! Canopies close. Mechanics swing the starters. My engine at once thunders into life. I turn to watch the others starting. All clear. The flight takes off together in formation. Our engines leave heavy vapor trails streaked across the clear blue sky. Then I spot the enemy formation ahead. It is an impressive sight. Some 300 heavy bombers are grouped together like a bunch of grapes in the shimmering sky. We draw closer to the bomber formation. I can distinguish the enemy aircraft now. Most of them liberators. They look as if their fat bellies were pregnant with bombs. I pick out one of them as my target. This is where I settle your hash, my friend, I muttered. I shall make a frontal attack. The Yankees focused in my sights. The liberator grows rapidly larger. I reached for the firing buttons on the stick. Traces come whizzing past my head. They have opened up on me. Fire! I press both buttons, but my aim is poor. I can see only a few hits registered in the right wing. I almost scrape the fat belly as I dive past. Then I'm caught in the slipstream, buffeting about so violently that for a moment I thought my tailplane was shot away. I climb steeply and break away to the left. Traces pursue me, unpleasantly close. Blast all this metal in the air. I come in for a second frontal attack, this time from a little below. I keep firing until I have to swerve to avoid a collision. My salvos register this time. I drop away below. As I swing around, I turn my head. Flames are spreading along the bottom of the fuselage of my liberator. It shears away from the formation in a wide sweep to the right. Twice more, I come in to attack, this time diving from above the tail. I am met by heavy defensive fire. My plane shudders under recoil from the two cannon and 30mm machine guns. I watch my cannon shells burst rake along the top of the fuselage and right wing, and I hang on to the stick with both hands. The inside engine stops. The fire spreads along the right wing. Suddenly, the wing breaks off altogether. The body of the stricken monster plunges vertically, spinning into the depths. A long black trail of smoke marks its descent. One of the crew attempts to bail out. His parachute is in flames. Poor devil. The body somersaults and falls to the ground like a stone. At 3,000 feet, there is a tremendous explosion which causes the spinning fuselage to disintegrate. Fragments of the blazing wreckage land on a farm below and the exploding fuel tanks sets the farm buildings on fire.
Enemy concentrations in map reference Dora Dora. That means action. We take off at 0835 hours. Bombs have been slung under our bellies. In the Heligoland area, we climbed high over the approaching bombers and released our bombs. A fantastic scene is produced by the explosions. The close flying formation is disorganized completely. Some of the fortresses plunge down in deep dives, while others swerve off to the sides. The bomb dropped by Sergeant Fest has exploded in the center of a close flight of three heavy bombers together. All three simultaneously go down to crash. More than 20 parachutes float in the air. Our earphones resound with whoops of triumph. We loop and roll above the enemy formation in sheer joy, and it is several minutes before we settle down again. I shout encouragement over the radio to my men. And now, let us give them the works! We dive in formation right into the Yanks. My men are completely carried away. Earphones scream with calls from every side. After them! After them! We continue our onslaught until we are close enough for the fortresses to ram them. I have a new aircraft with a 30mm cannon. It punches great holes in the fuselage of the fortress, which I've picked as my victim. Alarmed, the fortress pilots try to get away by plunging. Five or six more of the enemy, some of them on fire, also swerve away from what remains of the formation. Now we can pick them off one by one. One after one, they go down in flames to crash into the sea. Only large patches of burning oil remains on the surface. Enemy concentrations in map reference sector Dora Dora. Once again, the time has come. I have a new aircraft. Aunt has been polishing it until it shines like a mirror. No doubt that will add another 10 miles per hour to the speed. 10.55 hours. Take off all lights! Take off all lights! We come out above the clouds at 10,000 feet and at the same moment sight our fortresses directly overhead. We climb to a parallel course, heading east up 20,000 feet, same altitude as the fortresses. I ordered the rockets to be discharged when we are in formation at a range of 2,000 feet. The next moment, a simply fantastic scene unfolds before our eyes. My own two rockets both register a perfect bullseye on a fortress. Thereupon, I'm confronted with an enormous solid ball of fire. The bomber has blown up in mid-air with its entire load of bombs. The blazing, smoking fragments come fluttering down. My attention is attracted by the rather peculiar appearance overhead of double moisture trails emanating from fast aircraft. What can they be? The peculiar-looking planes keep circling above the bombers. If they are German, why do they not attack? I climb up alone for a closer look at them. Lightnings! 12 of 14 aircraft. The Yank has brought a fighter escort. I radio the warning to my comrades. Since I cannot attack them alone, I decide to swoop down once more upon the fortresses. Then suddenly, four other peculiar-looking single-engine aircraft dive past. Blast! They are thunderbolts! I've not seen them before. I dive behind them. The thunderbolts are after my wingman Reinhardt, who is chasing a lone crippled bomber. Reinhardt! Reinhardt, wake up! Thunderbolts behind! Reinhardt does not reply, but keeps on calmly blazing away at his fortress. But now, the leading thunderbolt is a perfect target in my sights. A single burst from all my guns is all that is needed. It bursts into flames and goes down spinning like a dead leaf into the depths below. It is my second kill today. Then there is a sudden hammering noise in my crate. I turn around. There is a thunderbolt hard on my tail. I push the stick right forward to escape. Too late. My engine is on fire. 
I can feel the heat. It becomes unbearable. Jettisoning the canopy, I pull the oxygen mask off my face, unfasten the safety harness, pulling my legs up and kick the stick forward with all my strength. I am shot clear of the aircraft, somersaulting the air through a great arc. After the terrific drop, I seem to be standing on air. I swing gently from side to side. What a marvelous invention the parachute is. To be sure always, provided it opens. On this day, Knoker shot down his third aircraft, a Liberator. Research indicated this Liberator to be Macy from the 44th Bomber Group, US 8th Air Force, piloted by Captain Howard Adams. Eight crew members, as well as a passenger journalist, were killed with this attack. The navigator and radio operator survived and were taken prisoner. This is the day that Knoker's flight of Yachtesvadi 11 attacked the formation with bombs and their new 30mm cannon armament. Knorka's flight claimed 11 B-17s shot down. According to US archives, 10 B-17s were lost in the Heligoland area on this day, mainly from the 96 and 385 bomber groups, with a casualty list of 71 killed and 27 taken prisoner. Bomb attacks with timed fuses were mainly designed to break up the bomber formations, but this strategy was discarded by the Luftwaffe. Research indicates that Knoker's rocket attack destroyed the B-17 named Elusive Elsie of 94th Bomber Group. Ten crew members were killed. The Thunderbolt Knoker shot down on this day was from the 56th Fighter Group, piloted by First Lieutenant Harry Dugas. He was killed in action during this event. <laughs> 